Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. The topic that we are going to cover today is mobile IP. It is from chapter 10 of the TCP IP protocol suit book. Now the first topic that we are going to cover is stationary and mobile host. The mobile IP addressing was based on the assumption that a host is stationary. But mobile hosts are not stationary. They tend to move from one network to another. In this case, the mobile IP addressing structure needs to be modified. So using a dynamic host configuration protocol or which is known as DHCP is a possible solution, but it has some drawbacks. The first drawback being configuration change. So when a mobile host moves from one network to another, its configuration is needed to be changed. Also, the mobile host is to be rebooted. The next drawback is updating the DNS table and letting everyone on the internet know that the mobile host has moved from one network to another. The last drawback being is when a mobile host moves from one network to the other, the constant communication is interrupted. So in order to overcome the drawbacks, what can be done is we can use two addresses. One is the home address, which is permanent and associates the host to its home network. And the other is the care of address, which is temporary and it is associated with the foreign network. So as you can see here, this is the home address and this is the care of address which is in the foreign network and you can see here that the home address is in the home network so once the mobile host moves from the home network to the foreign network it will have two addresses that is home address and the care of address the next topic that we are going to cover is agents now to make the change of address transparent to the rest of the internet, it requires a home agent and a foreign agent. So home agent is basically the router that is attached to the home network of the mobile host and foreign agent is the router that is attached to the foreign network of the mobile host. As you can see, this home agent is basically a router and it is connected to the home network and the foreign agent can be associated with the foreign network. Moving on, now we are going to discuss about the communication with the remote host. So, to communicate with the remote host, a mobile host goes through three phases, which are agent discovery, registration, and data transfer. So, in agent discovery, we have agent solicitation and advertisement, which are ICMP packets. Then in the second phase, which is registration, we have registration request and reply. These messages are encapsulated in a UDP user datagram. And the last phase is data transfer, which basically transfers data from remote host to mobile host. Okay, so this is an overview of the three phases. Now, when the mobile host is at its home address, it will want to find a home agent. So what it does is, it sends a agent solicitation ICMP packet and the router which accepts this packet will respond via an ad agent advertisement saying that it will be his home agent. When this mobile host moves from its home address to the foreign network, what, what will it do is it wants to find a foreign agent. So in order to find a foreign agent, this mobile host in the foreign network will broadcast an agent solicitation packet and any router which finds it will respond it by agent advertisement packet. So in this way, the mobile host has found both the home and foreign agent. So this is the first part of the phase. Now, moving on to the second phase, which is registration, the mobile host wants to register the foreign agent and the home agent. So it will do this by sending a registration request message to the foreign agent in order to register the foreign agent. This foreign agent when 
then relay this registration request to the home agent. The home agent now will know the address of the foreign agent since this packet was sent via the foreign agent. Now the home agent will reply through our registration reply and the foreign agent also will respond via registration reply telling the mobile host that the registration is complete. So this is the second phase which is registration. Now the last phase is the data transfer where the remote host will send data to the mobile host. So in the data transfer phase what we can see is this is the home network, this is the remote network. Now the remote host wants to send a packet to the mobile host. What, what it will do is it will initially send a packet to the original home that is the home address of the mobile host. Now this packet will be intercepted by the home agent and then the home agent will encapsulate this packet and send it to the foreign agent. Now the foreign agent will decapsulate this packet and send it to the mobile host after consulting the registry table and finding out its care of address. Now if a mobile host wants to reply back to the remote host it will just send a packet to the remote host remote network address. So let's recap what is happening. Firstly the remote host sends a packet to the mobile host in the home address. Now this packet is intercepted by the home agent and it encapsulates this packet and sends it to the foreign agent. Now the foreign agent will decapsulate this packet and it will search where to send this packet. It will do so by searching for the care of address of the mobile host. After finding out the care of address, it will send it to its destination. So after the mobile host receives the packet, now if it wants to communicate with the remote host, it will just do so by sending it to the remote host. Now moving on to the next topic, we have inefficiency in mobile IP. The inefficiency can be severe or moderate. Uh, so the first inefficiency is double crossing which is for severe case and the second one is triangle routing which is for moderate case. Let's see what double crossing is. Now when the remote host and the mobile host are in the same network this double crossing situation occurs. So now if the remote host wants to send a packet to the mobile host firstly it will send the packet to the home network which will be intercepted by this home agent and then this packet will be resend to the same network. So here we can see that the packet is traveling unnecessarily and it traverses twice the internet. So basically this is very inefficient. Now moving on to the triangle routing. This occurs when the remote host and the mobile host are in different networks. So initially the remote host sends a packet to the home agent then the home agent will send the packet to the foreign agent and then it will relay it to the mobile host. This is a very moderate case and this is not as inefficient as double crossing. So basically as you can see a triangle is being formed. That is why the name is triangle routing. So here we can see why it is inefficient because it is traveling the internet by two sides of the triangle instead of just the one. Thank you very much. This will be all for today's class.